came on board and he was my Friday co-host and it was always fun Freddy Friday. We just had a, a blast with different co-hosts. And as time changed and everybody's jobs changed and we went here and we went there and we kind of split and did things. I went to North Carolina for a while. Then I came back here and uh, doing WGGS up in Greenville, doing WATC in Atlanta. Loved every single minute of it. People kept saying, how did you end up on television? Today we're going to show you, we're going to tell you, and you're going to wonder how in the world did I do it for 16 years? Um, I started thankful to Rhonda Thomas, who actually brought me to do a couple of programs up in Blue Ridge. We did that, and that was on Flavors of the South. We had so much fun, and Hans Rupert was there that day, and so of course it had to be fun, and it just sort of bit me, and I said, uh-oh, I like doing this. And then we're going to proceed to how we got where we are today. So we're going to share a bunch of stuff with you. We're going to share some footage. I cannot believe I'm sharing this because it was so bad. It was so dark. It was so, uh, the lighting was terrible. The audio was bad. We weren't using great cameras then. Very, very different than what we have today. We have high definition cameras. They show every wrinkle I have. They show every time I gain two ounces, every time I lose two ounces, they show everything. This is real TV. We're going to go back to the olden days and we're going to share a bunch of stuff. We're also going to share probably the most, the thing that I most enjoyed in my life was the labor of love of being part of Remodeling Harris Farm and we're going to share that with y'all. We're also going to share stories of people who aren't here because Noah Harris was a big part of why I'm in television today. When Noah Harris passed away, and we put up 26 miles of yellow ribbons. Then WATC came to see me, and then uh, Channel 11 in Atlanta came to see me, Channel 5 came to see me, Channel 2 came to see me. They all came to our florist and said, how did y'all get involved in this? Well, it was a local florist here in Ella J who actually came up with the idea, and they called me and said, would you be a part of this? And I said, of course I will. I can remember to this day, Vietnam vets walking into our florist handing me a hundred dollars and saying buy more yellow ribbon please and put out more yellow ribbon in honor of our fallen soldier. It was an amazing time in history. <clears throat> it was an amazing time in our community. Today you can walk into the Noah Harris post office here in LJ. Um, we honor David Collins by I had a marker put up and thank God for, for our representative Tom Graves who was a big part in making that happen. It took us a while to get it done but the intersection at Philadelphia Road where David Collins grew up is actually named in honor of him. And then we put it up in McKaysville. We put yellow ribbons up in McKaysville in honor of Justin when he passed away. So there was three local guys. They're a big part of why I'm in television today because other television stations would come and interview me and then people would say, hey, we saw you on TV and we enjoyed what you said and thank you for what you said about our community. It's about our communities. It's about fun from ball ground to turtle town. Now, when I chose my co-host, I chose wisely because I knew that they were gonna have to get along with me and I was gonna have to really like them or it wasn't gonna work. The chemistry wasn't gonna work. And Joe Kelly McCutcheon interviewed me one time and he said, you are amazing because you don't script anything. You just fly by the seat of your pants and how do you do this? He always has notes and he always does this and that. And I just said, I don't know, it just works. Well, my director, Fred Wyndham from Atlanta came in and he said, give me a 30 second spot. Give me a 30, and I always did it point on. And he said, how do you do that? And I said, I don't know. I think my brain works in 30 second increments. I don't know, but it always worked. And then I lost Fred. And when Fred passed away, um, I was ready to give up on television. I didn't want to do it anymore. It wasn't fun anymore. I miss him so terribly bad. And um, quite honestly, I, I thought, I, I'm not, I don't want to do this anymore. Yesterday, when ETC filled this building with our full crew and everybody was back and everybody was healthy and everybody was wise and wealthy and everything was good, I remembered why I love doing television. I remembered why you're a big part of why I love doing television. Every time I would think, it's time to retire. Somebody would stop me at McDonald's. Somebody would stop me over at Mike's LJ restaurant. They would say, we love what you talked about today. Thank you so much for mentioning my dad. Thank you so much for mentioning my mom. Thank you for caring about my family. That's why I continue to do live television. 
Now, when my co-host changed and everybody went back to a real life, um, I said, okay, how am I going to do this? So I started bringing this in and this in and doing this and doing this. And then my friend Susan is responsible for me bringing in my next co-host. And he is with us on Thursdays, and we do Throwback Thursdays, and, and we always throw it back to some craziness. We never talked a whole lot about Gilmer County in the past. We talked about Fannin County, we talked about Ball Ground, we talked about Jasper, but I didn't know a lot about the LJ area, even though I had lived in the workforce here for all those years. I just didn't know a lot about it. I knew the Chansey family, I knew the Cantrell family, I know a lot of the families, but I just didn't get out and, and do probably what I should have done in LJ. I don't have to anymore because I have a co-host on Thursday that is born, bred, raised, and loves LJ. So all I have to do on Thursdays now is sit here and let him tell you about LJ. And I love it. I love every minute of it. I love his craziness. I love his quirkiness. I love his music. He is tremendously talented. And it's like I got the package deal that I used to get. Matt was the lead singer of the Inspirations. Melton was the baritone. Bill Senyard was the lead singer for First Mountain City. Charlene was one of my dearest friends, like a child to me. Angela was my daughter. I mean, I had it made with my co-host because I knew everything about them and they knew every quirky thing about me. Well, my new co-host, I didn't know squat about him. And when he said, have you heard my song? And I said, no, what song? He thought I was kidding. I wasn't kidding. I'd never heard the song. I'm ashamed of myself because I worked in LJ for almost 16 years. And I thought, dummy, what were you thinking? So I made it a point now to honor and represent and to share a little bit of LJ every week. And I'm gonna continue to do that. I love everything about the stories I hear from him but I love the most about the things that he's done for other people. And I think that's what life's about. And so today, yesterday, Mike Smith, well, actually, let's go back. Last Sunday, when our pastor was out and Mike Smith delivered a message at First Baptist in Ballground, it really, really touched my heart. And now that I have this book, this book, I've been reading it and reading it, and I want to share some of that with y'all today. We are here to be a blessing to somebody else. Hopefully not a lesson to somebody else. But I've had some lessons thrown at me lately. And I've had some things happen that I'm like, God, that's not even funny. And then I have some really cool stuff happen to me. And I got to share a cool stuff yesterday. Yesterday, I'm on a mission to get pears because I am a pear relish fanatic. I've always loved it. I love pear preserves. Dawn can't wait for me to teach her to make pear preserves. So I always spot these pear trees. Well, I've been going through Nelson. I could do the back road through Nelson every day or so. And I kept watching this pear tree. Well, yesterday the pears were on the ground. So I stopped and I pulled over and I said, I know you're gonna think I'm crazy, but are you gonna use those pears? And when she said no, I said, oh, can I use them? And she said, yes. And I said, thank you so much. So last night, these were laying on the ground. Today, they are in a jar. Now this is the same exact recipe I always use, but these did not change color like the other ones do. They were a little bit softer pear, they were a little bit, a little bit different texture, but they smelled fantastic, they tasted fantastic, and I can't wait to sample that. It's my original recipe, but the pear was a little bit different, so that's going to be interesting. But that was just a neighbor, and I just stopped, and I said, could I? And she shared the bounty with me. How cool is that? How cool is that? That's what life is about. We're supposed to share the good stuff. We're supposed to be kind, and we're supposed to speak kindness, and we're not supposed to do negativity. And I think that's what we ought to concentrate on. So if you have anything negative to say, you might keep it to yourself. If you have anything mean to say, you might know that God is watching. And I found, in, in Mike's book, I found so many things that I just, it captivated me. I'm like, I love this. But I want to read a couple of different things. And one of them is this, this one, first one, the last will be first. It seems like everybody wants to be number one these days. There is nothing wrong with trying to do your best 
and coming out on top. But I think Jesus tells us we really should be third. The order would be God, family, and friends, and then us. The order makes me think of what happened when I played baseball at the University of Georgia under coach Jim Watley. The team was in a bad slump. We weren't, we just weren't hitting the ball. Reminds me of what Yogi Berra said with one of his famous sayings, I ain't in no slump, I just ain't hitting. Good one, Yogi. We weren't hitting and Coach Watley decided to change things up. He made the batting lineup in alphabetical order. Some of the guys that had been batting at the first part of the order were now at the end. The ones that had been at the end were now toward the front. The Bible says that will happen again when Jesus makes all things right. The last will be first and the first last. That was one of Jesus' favorite sayings throughout the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Kingdom values are opposite of earthly values. The way to receive rewards is in heaven is to serve humbly. We just need to serve and leave the order to Jesus. He is the master coach and he knows how to make out a lineup. By the way, the alphabetical lineup didn't help us get out of the slump, but it created another Coach Watley story. So. That is from Mike Smith's book. And y'all, if you're smart, you will pick this book up and it will change the way you look at life. And honestly, lately, I've had some things happen that I'm just like, really, is this not crazy? Is this just not the weirdest thing you ever saw? And then all of a sudden, things go good and things go right. And so you're blessed. I'm gonna bless y'all tonight because at the Historical Society, one of our dear, dear friends in ball ground, Paul Nelson, is going to come and he's going to speak about the 9-11 event. You've seen him here on my program. You got to know him a little bit because he's visited with us several times. He brought his beautiful wife, Gina, with him one time. And um, we know that 9-11 was probably the hardest day in American history besides the days of full war. It was a day that America came together. We stood and held hands. We sang songs together. We prayed together. We attended our churches more than ever. And Paul's going to talk about that tonight at the Historical Society in Ball Ground. It begins at 7 o'clock. We would love to welcome you to come and be there and to hear a little bit about this big, huge teddy bear who was part of picking up the body parts of all the thousands of people who died at that horrific site. It was a, a day that he will never forget. It was a, a lifetime that he will never forget because he's still losing friends to the after effects of what happened on that day. So many detectives, so many police officers, so many firefighters lost their lives because they ended up with cancer because of what they dealt with at that site. So it is a time that in America, we need to come back together. We need to pray together. We quit, need to quit being negative and quit taking each other down and quit saying smart aleck things. We need to be good because I'll tell you what, he's watching, he's watching, he's watching. And I think it's time that the goodness come back to America. My goodness in my life was always being around good people who supported me and lifted me. And honestly, when Matt sent me a message a few minutes ago and I told him what we were talking about today, he and I both just laughed and I said, you know, we have been through so much together, but we made it. And I was talking to another friend on the way to work this morning and he told me, he said, you know, we've been through so much together. We have, and that's what friends are about. Friends are not about putting you down and, and being angry and being mean to you. Friends are about holding you up and standing there when you fall and helping you up when you fall. So that's what life is really about. Now, I chose to start today with Bill Sinyard because Bill Sinyard was that co-host that I chose him for two days a week. At first, he was on Mondays and Wednesdays, and then we gave Wednesday to Charlene, and that was Bill's idea because his lawn business was growing to a point he just didn't have the time to do two days a week, but we had so much fun. I still today love when I see my phone ring and it's Bill Sinyard because he's going to tell me something funny. That's what life is supposed to be about. It's supposed to be about the good times, the happy times, and the memories that, that make us all what we are today. But what we should all be today is good and kind to everyone. And so to the lady who gave me these pears, thank you for your kindness. Thank you for what you did to help me. I had my peppers cut, I had my onions cut, I was ready to go, but I was on a search for pears. So how precious is that that she shared those with me? Now we're gonna go now to some photos that I'm so excited to share. 
the happiest time in my life was probably when um, we did Harris Farm. And so we're gonna do the Bill Senyard interview and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna share, I think it's my greatest tribute to myself because I took an old house that my husband didn't think I could ever live in and recreated it, restructured it, built onto it and lived there for several years very, very happily. And then went on and moved and uh, built a new house. But, but the life's memories are still there. And never will I love a bedroom any more than I loved mine at the farm. Save those wonderful memories and do away with those bad negative thoughts. Do away with those bad negative memories. If somebody has done something to hurt your feelings, to harm you, we are supposed to forgive. And uh, we see a lot of people who don't know how to do that. It's very hard for me. Forgiving is one of the hardest things ever, and sometimes I just walk away and you never hear from me again. That's just the way it gets. So that's maybe not the way to do it, but sometimes that's what happens. So today is gonna be about going back, going to the happy times, getting away from the negativity, and knowing that every single day could be our last day on earth. Today I changed my quilt, and I wanted to share this with y'all. A dear, dear, dear man many, many years ago would bring me turnips all the time. He had a big garden and he would bring me turnips. We had met long, long ago, I was 23 years old, when we worked together at Bent Tree. And I thought about yesterday when I had this quilt in the car, if it hadn't been for this precious man who loved me and brought me collards and turnips all the time, I wouldn't have this gorgeous quilt that just turned my life around. This is the most beautiful quilting I've ever seen. It is absolutely perfect. And it came from an estate, a 1939 home. The estate was just settled. And I was fortunate enough to end up with this quilt. If it hadn't been for my love for that man and his precious family and his sweet, sweet wife that I absolutely adore, I wouldn't have this beautiful quilt. And, and that's what you get blessed many, many years later, 45 years later, I'm being blessed because of this wonderful family. That's what life is supposed to be about. It's not supposed to be about the anger and the jealousy and the vindictiveness. It's supposed to be good. Let's enjoy life in a good way. So today we're gonna do, Bill Sinyard and I are gonna talk about something that is very important to all of you. We're watching the stock market, we're watching the interest, we're watching all the things we do, but we're also watching how do you save your money? What do you do? Bill collects gold, he, he does gold, he does silver, he does coins, he does all kinds of things. And we talked about that on, our, on a show about 12 years ago. And when you think about that, when you look at the price of gold today, you will see that Bill and I had a little bit of a vision that maybe gold would go up. Well, it sure has almost doubled. So. Let's go to a visit with Bill Senyard, and then when we come back, we're gonna share a little bit of Harris Farm with y'all, and then we're gonna really go raw, because we're gonna go back to the original heart of the homes. They were tough, the lighting was bad, it was crazy, and we're gonna share some behind the scenes stories with you on that. I'll be back in just a couple of minutes. That old, but um, that, that thing has been around 60 years. Yeah. How Pretty many hands shape. do you think have touched that in 60 well, years? Well, I don't know, but you know they say money is one of the dirtiest things you can handle. Yuck! So. Ew, nasty, 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 nasty. Don't you nasty. have a few other little pieces I picked up from you today? You got some old Kennedy sil uh, Kennedy half dollars, uh -huh. and uh, the one I like most. Did you pay is, me uh, for it yet? Uh, I did. Yes, I did. Well, where's it at? I, I stuck it in your envelope. Oh, okay. It, so. <laughs> I just want to make sure at this yard sale I haven't been cheated. <laughs> But you're, you were gracious enough to give me a couple others, a Standing Liberty Quarter, right. which is in poor condition, but they're yeah, rare and to find. I don't need it, because if I had it, I'd be trying to figure out how to spend it. Yeah, these were made from the early 1900s all the way up into the 1940s. Now, is this silver? This is silver. Okay. You hear that? I Dif do. Different sound. Flat as a flitter. Yeah, different yeah. sound than this. That's only 40% oh, silver. Oh, yeah. Wow. Big difference in the sound. You see, 1964 was the year. Uh -huh. 1964. 1964 was a really good year. Well, from 64 on your quarters and your... Uh, silver dollars, thing like that. They were making it with 90% silver up oh, to that wow. point. Oh, wow. And then they stopped and started mm -hmm. making it with 40% silver. Uh -huh. So they don't have as much silver. And you know what silver has done in the last 12 months? It went crazy. It's gone through it the roof. Crazy. So some yeah. of these coins are actually like pennies. You know, copper, people are stealing copper left and right. Oh, yeah. A penny is not worth 
I mean, the, the copper in it is worth more than the, the cent. Exactly. And same thing with the silver. Well, yesterday on Joel Osteen, he was sharing this message, and it was so cool. This guy who really, really needed money, he, he was looking for capital. He was trying to find some money. He had this huge conglomerate of old batteries. Have you heard this, mm -mm. this one? It was amazing, and I said, you would have loved this. Old because batteries. Old batteries, and these were lead-filled old batteries from the war, from right, World right. War II. Car, he, car track batteries. And he thought they were full of lead. Mm. Well, he went to bed one night, and he had this dream. And in this dream, he had a vision that in this huge stack of batteries was a tiny, unusual battery. So, And it was a motorcycle battery from World War II. So the next day, he and his son go and they move all these batteries. They physically hand move. Now, you know how teenagers are. If you told Jordan you're going to spend all day long moving batteries, yeah. Jordan would say, okay, Dad, I'll sit here and watch you. No, he had something else better to do is what it is. Yeah, well, the dad and the son finally reach this battery that he saw in his dream. And they take it to a man who says, oh, yeah, you can recycle it and it'll bring a couple of dollars. Hmm. And the guy said, oh, I don't know. I think there's something more going on here. And he weighed it and he said, well, lead is only bringing so much, whatever it was. And the guy said, I don't know about this. Well, they opened it and guess what was in it? Pure silver. Wow. Every battery out there in that stack was pure silver silver now because that, the Germans during World War II experimented, experimented with taking the lead out and putting silver in the batteries hmm. to see if it would work better. Wow. So guess how much Bubba was worth all of a sudden. I guess his dream uh, came true, His huh? dream came true and, and that was what the message was yesterday and I loved it. I needed something yesterday to say no matter what you think you're facing, look a little deeper, look a little farther you know, really analyze what is really happening in my life. And then that guy truly did. And he became huge wealthy. I mean, like big sure. wealthy. Yeah. And it was during the time silver had started to take its peak. Now, it peaked about, what, 25 years ago once? Yeah. And but it nothing just, like it is today. No, no, no. It's more than triple, almost four or five times what it was just yeah. a couple years ago. And, and back then, I sold my silver tea services. I sold my silverware. I sold anything silver I had because it had never done what it was doing then. Hmm. Today, if I still had that tea service, I could invite some really nice folks to dinner because we could have a really nice tea and then we would melt that stuff down. But silver is doing something it's never done before. Yeah. What is gold today? Uh, it's around 12, 1300 an ounce. That is unbelievable. I or remember more. when it hit 800, everybody is selling everything they have. They're jerking off necklaces, jerking off earrings, they're jerking things off their fingers, and they're saying, melt this big boy down and let's have some money. Did you ever think in your lifetime you would see gold at this price? I did, and I think it's going to go even more. I was you talking, do? Yeah, I was talking to Paul Kiker about it. He thinks it's going to probably even triple what it is now. Well, that means the next jewelry I buy will be Tupperware. <laughs> yeah. Plastic, yeah. We won't be able to afford anything else. No. So, wow, it, that is unbelievable. Well, you know, for years, you always heard the old saying for decades and decades, even centuries, that gold and silver, platinum, all the hard metals, precious metals are always going to be there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's always, and it's going to be a good investment. Well. So. Yeah. A lot of folks believe in that, and, and yeah. this guy who had that stack of batteries, and y'all, I'm telling you, they said it was like a, a, a building, two or three story building high wow. of batteries. And he so, didn't know he had silver in all no. that. No. I love Bill Sinyard. I love Bill Sinyard. We had so much fun together. We had so many good, good memories. And that's what life is about. Set up those good memories and leave that bad stuff behind. So to Bill Zinyard, I love you and I'm so glad you and Melissa are having fun. They travel all the time and I love seeing their photos. They've been to Hawaii I don't know how many times. But okay, now we're going to take you back and we're going to go a long way back because we're going to show you Harris Farm. Everybody always said, how did you get to television? Okay, I got to television because my late husband, um, had a dream to live at the old farm that was in his family for many, many years. At the same time, he had just been diagnosed with cancer. So we move into the farm and he said, you're never going to be able to live here. It's too small. You won't like it. Da, 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 da. I said, let's remodel it. So we started with run one room at a time. By the time he died, we had done the kitchen, but that's as far as we'd gotten. And um, the rest is history. I doubled the size of the farm. I completely had it redone. Thank you, Tommy Boswell, for being the master of it all. He was amazing. And at that time, I thought that would be my forever home. Well, that didn't work out. So, but I want to share because my heart was there. 
when I finished the farm, the newspaper came out and did an article, and they did a beautiful spread. It was actually like two pages in the Pickens County Progress, and it was just amazing sharing the history of the farm. And Preacher Walker used to bring people out there to go on tours because this was an 1835 farm that was part of the Cherokee Nation. And so it was really, really, it was really important in the history of Pickens County. So it was important, you know, family history too. My husband was very involved in, he wanted this to be all it could be. So I made it all it could be. And um, I want to share some of what we did. So we're going to show some photos now. And I think Donovan has a few that he's going to pull up that you will see. Um, it was truly a labor of love. And I filled it with antiques. I filled it with original pieces. I tried to make it look as, as much as I could of the old home, but I didn't bring the picture today of the old home. I'm going to do that one day because we're gonna do a DVD that starts from beginning to end of this creation. The old house was just a little bitty shell. Now that's as it was when I got it. The day that we moved in there, that's how the farm looked. Well, by the time I finished, it was double that size. And um, I absolutely loved every single minute of that project. So we went from that little home that was on the back of the house and I added on to the back. I added that cellar used to terrify me. And that was one of the Indian buildings that the Indians actually used during their time on the property. There were actually three of those total. And there's my favorite front porch in the whole wide world. And when you look at the post, Tommy Boswell actually took down one of the posts and recreated that post because I extended the porch and more than tripled the size of it. So he recreated and made it all look original. You couldn't tell where the old stopped and where the new began. He did a wonderful job. There's a garden that I did in memory of my husband and it had a little sign out there that says, in memory of J.S. Martin, a quiet man who got things done. And I tried to call Teddy Duncan this morning because Teddy told me something one day. He said, what do you mean a quiet man who got things done? He said, you know how he got it done? He picked up the phone, called you. I want to share y'all a few pictures of this is how the project started because Tommy would call me and he'd say, well, what do you think? He said, do you think, you think we should go on both ends? And I said, yeah, of course we should go on both ends. So this is where we added the master bath and a bedroom on that end. And then this is where we added the den. This was my favorite room ever. I love, love, love this. This was where we added the den. And I did add stained glass in the den. And then this is at the finished den. You know, we just, we got to a point that I said, I want it to be big enough that if company comes, uh, we used to have the inspirations there and we'd have 40 or 50 people come and eat. We had a great time there. And this is where we added on. And Tommy kept saying, how do you want the roof line done? And I said, I don't know, you decide. And did it one way and then he changed it and did it another way, which was really, really cool. But this is what you can do with an old farmhouse. You don't have to just let it sit there. You can recreate it, but you can keep the, the dignity of it. And this is, this is what I did in honor of my husband. He loved seeing me work in the garden. He loved seeing me gather the crops. He loved, and he knew I loved flowers. And every holiday he would buy me something to plant in the yard. This is the actual picture that was in the Pickens County Progress, and this is how I ended up on television. Jeff came out and did a story for the Progress, and uh, we just had a blast. And he spent the day with me, we sat on the porch, we laughed, we drank tea, we talked, and then the article came out. And next thing I knew, television stations were coming, and that just kept on and on and on. Now this is the precious, precious, this is J.S.'s mom. This is Mama, and Mama was four feet 11, little tiny thing. Her mama was a tiny little thing, and she was a force to be reckoned with. Both of them were little, but they got things done. They were the canning queens of the cannery. They won all kinds of awards for how many green beans they canned. And this is her sitting in the home that she grew up in as a child. So that was really, really cool. And this is out of my master bath, which probably was my favorite room in the house. Loved it, loved it, loved it. And I used stained glass. I didn't use any curtains because I don't like window treatment. I'm, my allergies are so bad and I don't like dust. So, and this is what I did to the walls of the kitchen. And I just love that. The, the wood does get a little bit darker as it ages, but this is how it was when we first did it. And that's the only room that was done before JS passed away. And this is an old, old ice box and I kept my towels in it. So you can pick up an antique and you can use it for a decorative piece or you can use it for a useful piece. And that's what I did. 
This is by far my favorite bedroom in the whole wide world. And um, I would love to recreate that room. It was, it was just my favorite room. I absolutely loved it. It had antique linens, a beautiful antique mahogany bed. And again, I just use the window treatments at the top. I don't use curtains because I like having that open light and the natural light. And this is the addition when the house was original, it didn't have this opening. And the cousin who actually got it before we did opened up that. And it used to have just two front rooms, a kitchen and a small bedroom that was actually Plumer's room. She was one of the great aunts. And um, this is the happiest kitchen in the world. We had so much fun. This is where Heart of the Home began. And Lori Tipton showed up at the farm we didn't have good lighting. She forgot to bring lights and we tried to make do. And you will see on these heart of the homes that we're about to show you, it was very different than the lighting today. Now this is the den. And one of the things that I did in recreating this farm and extending the size of it, I used original antique glassware because I wanted the windows to look like they had always been there. So I chose antique stained glass and I love that. That is just one of my favorite scenes ever. And then this is in the hall. And this is my favorite color I've ever used. And uh, it just, it was perfect. It was absolutely perfect. And when, what you see, and you can't see it up close, this is an original picture of the farm as it was in the 1830s. So this was just my favorite room. And it has the big old boards. And it was the hallway that started in the original house. And then this is, I used all antiques in the house. No matter what room I was doing, I used antiques. And I did the antiques and then I used quilting. And this wasn't an original old quilt. The one on the bed was at the foot of the bed is, but the one that was on the bed was actually, this was Nick's room. And this was a Bob Timberlake quilt that looked like an old original. So, and then this is the den from the inside. And you can see a little, a little bit of the living room. So I opened up the den and we lived in there during this process. And I will tell you, if you're renovating a house and you think you can live there when you're varnishing the floors, no, you can't, we about died. It was horrible. And then this is another shot of that beautiful, beautiful stained glass. So if you're looking, and I will tell you, it's not code. We had to build the house, use other glass, and then replace this on top of it. We had to keep the original, we had to keep the glass that passed code, and then we put this on top of it. So, um, because it, it isn't code, this leaded glass is not code, so. But I love that, that's just, these are, these are happy, happy memories. And um, everybody always says, how did you get on television? Well, actually, restoring Harris Farm, Restoring Harris Farm was the reason. And uh, I gotta show one more picture. And this is, this is the bathroom. And everybody knows in old houses, this house did not come with the bathroom. It came with a back porch. When we got there, the bathroom, if you were sitting at the kitchen table where you ate, the bathroom was right beside the table. And I said, oh, JS, this isn't gonna work. So I immediately closed in that wall and then opened the bathroom from another room. So, so there you go. You know, the memories, the amazing memories of the love and the labor and the creation and being able to take me and put it into that home, it's always gonna be a special memory. And that's what life's about. Keep those good memories close to your heart and let the bad memories go. Okay, when Lori Tipton came to visit, she said, I'd like to talk to you about doing a cooking segment on ETC. And I looked at my secretary and I looked at her and I said, I don't have time for that. And Kathy said, yes, you do. And so today, you talk about raw footage and some crazy lighting and maybe not the best equipment in the world and we did the best we could. It was hysterical. I'd never done live TV. I had no idea. I'd been interviewed a bunch of times, but it was just a little short interview. So we had to do this. And I said, well, maybe I'll try it. And the rest truly is history because Heart of the Home was born because Lori Tipton had seen the article about the house in the newspaper, came to visit me, and then we started. You know, as I looked at these old programs, 
Von Seal Moser is gone to be with the Lord. Myrna Denson is gone to be with the Lord. So many of the people who were featured on these first heart of the homes have gone to be with the Lord. And I kept saying, how can I get this to their families? How can I make sure that they know how important this moment was to me? Well, I think doing today's program is the way I can do it. So we're gonna go now and we're gonna start. I hope we get in several of these. We're gonna start with Von Seal's Coconut Cake. All my life, I thought this was made from a scratch cake because it is the best cake in the world. I will put it up against anybody's. And when she came to do the show and I had my grandma's recipe sitting there and then Von Seal did hers, I said, are you kidding me? Since I was a little kid, I've loved your cakes and I thought that it was all from scratch. It wasn't, but you're gonna love the technique she uses. So we're gonna go now to some Heart of the Homes some Heart of the Homes that will touch your heart. I hope that they will also teach you a little bit about cooking because the greatest cake in the world was made from a cake box. And we're gonna share that with you right now. We have been serving up uh, wonderful homemade dishes since 1860. Now I haven't been around since 1860, but I have been around for quite a few years. And today I would love to welcome my cousin, Von Seal Moser, Hi. who has been making wonderful coconut cakes for our family for many, many years. Today we're going to share our Grandma Dobbs recipe with you, which is a homemade cake with these ingredients. And today we're going to share Von Seal's secret recipe, which happens to be very simple and is a great way for today's busy homemaker to make a wonderful dish that she could give as a gift or um, take to a birthday party and her secret it's frozen coconut, the same secret that Grandma Dobbs used. So we would love to share this cake with you. The cake recipe is available in our Pickens County Habitat for Humanity cookbook. Our cookbooks are available at several merchants in downtown Jasper, um, Crescent Bank, Community Bank, Appalachian Memories, Garner Ace Hardware, and all board members for Habitat for Humanity. And now I'd like for my guest, Von Seal Moser, to explain her wonderful cake recipe to you. Simple, wonderful, and everyone will love it. Thank you, Sherry. I just make it by the box recipe on the back, and Cook it, I'll take a serrated knife, slice it lengthwise, make four layers instead of two, and then the frosting is 12 ounces of Cool Whip, 12 ounces of coconut, eight ounces of sour cream, and a cup and a half of sugar. Okay, the ingredients for our super fast, great, great cake are one box of white cake mix. Cook according to the directions on the box. Simple, simple. Your frosting, the secret to this recipe. 16 ounces of Cool Whip thawed. 16 ounces of frozen coconut. Remember, only use frozen coconut. Eight ounces of sour cream and one and a half cup of sugar. Now the secret to this is mix the sour cream, mix the sugar and mix the Cool Whip, but mix it for about five minutes until the sugar is completely dissolved and completely smooth. Um, and then you layer the coconut in with the frosting and there's your end result. And I promise you, you can, you can take it to your mother-in-law and she will not know <laughs> that you didn't work all day long to make this cake. Granny's recipe was wonderful, but this one, easy, simple, and in half the time with half the ingredients. And we'd love for you to share the cake with us now. The best part of this show is sharing this wonderful cake with our friends. And we are going to slice and celebrate. This cake really brings a reason to celebrate. Bring in your friends, bring in your neighbors, and watch them smile. Now you see the four layers? This is a very simple, simple way to make lots of folks happy. I think it's time for me to sample this cake. What do y'all think? Mm -mm. Wonderful as always. Absolutely wonderful. Light and fresh, and nobody knows it's not homemade. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, y'all. Supper? No. Breakfast? No. Now I'm ready. I want a piece of coconut cake. Oh my gosh. It was amazing. That was such a cool cake. Okay, we're going to move on now to a, a pizza recipe that I have done for over 60 years because mama started doing it when I was a little kid. And over 60 years we did this, but I improvised and changed it a little bit. And then we're gonna do chicken bites that my dear friend Doreen Lee taught me. 
Doreen was my friend from Kankakee, Illinois, and the first day I met her, she was going to season butter beans with peanut oil. And I looked at her and I said, no, 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 no. I said, you are in the south now, young lady. We use Fatback. And so here we go as we go to pizza as I made it the little kids pizza size and right, chicken bites. And chicken. There you go. Emily, you want to taste this? There you go. Good? Very good. Angela is now going to show you how to make our chicken roll up using Oscar Mayer bacon, boneless chicken breast, and uh, brown sugar. Simple, simple recipe. Go mm -hmm. ahead. Um, first thing I do is I get the boneless chicken tender strips and I just cut those up with the scissors You can get like three bites out of one strip, which is really awesome Put a little bit of Worcestershire on there let it soak then get your Oscar Mayer bacon and I cut that in half So I get double for the package Then just take a little bit of the chicken and then we're gonna roll it up and you can also put water chestnuts in these which gives it a little bit extra crunch and that makes it super yummy. Then just line them up in your little cooking dish, put them pretty close, and then after we get the bowl full, we're going to cover them in brown sugar. Sinfully cover them in brown sugar. So you've got all the necessities for a super great snack. You got your fat, your little bacon, your chicken, and your sugar. <laughs> and have your Diet Coke with that. All right. <laughs> I am going to perform the sinful, sinful part of this. I'm going to just cover it with light brown sugar. Absolutely wonderful. These have been in the oven for approximately 35 minutes at 375 degrees. Everybody's oven has its own little things in it, and I just test them, look at them, make sure they're done but um, 375 degrees for about 35 minutes. Remember, no matter who wins the Super Bowl, we've given you two recipes that are sure to be a winner at your next party. Easy, simple, inexpensive, and something you can prepare in 35 minutes. I picked a bad, bad day to be cooking on here because I, honest to goodness, I'm hungry right now. And watching all this food, those chicken bites are absolutely delightful. I've shared that recipe with so many people and they absolutely love it. So it is super simple, it is super yummy. And if you're doing a wedding, if you're doing a shower, if you're doing anything that you want to uh, really cook to impress people, that is one of those easy, easy recipes. So try that. Okay, the next one is, I think this is a taco casserole, and it is one that somebody taught me to make, and I've made it over and over and over, and I started doing it, serving it on a bed of lettuce, or serving it as a dip, so here we go. Okay, and this one, let me, let me tell you, I think the last time I did it, I did it with Eric Chastain, who was working at the fire department. And I said, this is one of those recipes you can please everybody. Number one, you don't tell everybody what's in it because somebody will say, I don't like sour cream, or somebody else will say, I don't like onions, or somebody else will say something. Just keep your mouth shut, make it, put it out on the table, and you will see them scarf it down. So just, you know, sometimes you don't share the recipe ingredients. Sometimes you just share the finished product, and that's what I often do. I remember when I did Grab It and Go, I didn't tell anybody for a long time what was in it because I thought somebody's going to say, I don't like sour cream. And I was like, oh no, you can't make this recipe without sour cream. So, so sometimes it's better to just keep it a secret. Here we go. Another Super Bowl recipe that's great for parties. It is called Tex-Mex casserole. And tonight um, we're going to tone it down and do it as a low fat version. Now in our um, Habitat cookbook, this is not done low fat, but we think this will be a great version and we want to share it with you. The ingredients for the recipe will be a pound of um, fresh ground turkey, a pound of fresh ground beef. To that, you'll add a pack of taco seasoning mix, and then you'll add any brand of salsa you're comfortable with. Um, and I use medium salsa. And then you will add a pack of, I believe this is eight ounces of Velveeta light cheese and then one container of sour cream, and we are going to use fat-free sour cream, and I have also done this with fat-free cottage cheese. It just depends on your preference. Some people don't like cottage cheese. So we're gonna offer the option of either way, but we're gonna do it today with sour cream. 
And then we're gonna use, we used half of a pack of mozzarella cheese, and I believe it was a 12 ounce pack. So we have about six ounces of mozzarella cheese. And we will begin now by adding the taco seasoning to the ground beef. You just add your taco seasoning, stir that in, and then I am going to put this in the casserole dish. And Tori Taylor will be taking over from here and she's gonna help me prepare this. She'll be adding the salsa as I chop the cheese. We have the ground beef and turkey. Tori's added the salsa. And now we're going to add the sour cream. At this time, you would add either cottage cheese or sour cream, so whichever one you'd like to do. I'm gonna add the Velveeta. And we've cut it in about half inch to quarter inch squares. Now we're gonna cover this with the low fat mozzarella cheese. And then Tori is gonna place this in an oven that's 365 degrees. And you cook it for about 20 minutes until it's bubbly and then serve it with your chips. We're gonna bake it quickly and then we'll be serving and sharing this with you in just a few minutes. Wow, hot out of the oven. Tori, would you please serve our Tex-Mex casserole? We're gonna do this as a meal. And remember, this is a good summer meal. And then we're gonna serve it as an appetizer or a party treat. Very good. So have it as a meal, have it as a side item, have it as a party favor. But you have learned a new, fast, easy, inexpensive, low fat. I'm starving. <laughs> I love that recipe. That is so easy, it is so good, it is so yummy, and everybody will love it. Do it with sour cream, do it with cottage cheese, do it however you want to do it. Okay, it is time for a commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to end with something that's really, really special to me. I'll see you in just a minute. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? The American Made Music Festival returns to Hiawassee, Georgia, September 15th through 17th. This three-day festival features the best of country, bluegrass, and gospel music, including special guests Craig Morgan, Lone Star, Ricky Skaggs, and Kentucky Thunder, Daly and Vincent. Stars and Stripes Forever, America. Three-day and single-day tickets available, along with on-site camping by the lake. The American Made Music Festivals with Daly and Vincent, presented by Gus Arendale and Springer Mountain Farms. United Country Talking Rock Realty says it best. I'm happy as long as I can see Sharp Top. From the ground up, new home to complete renovation or remodel, we have combined the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. High-speed Wi-Fi, 
not quite as important as running water in your home, but close. Ignite Internet from ETC powers your Wi-Fi network with consistent speeds to keep all your gadgets going strong. Streaming video players, laptops, tablets, even smartphones, so you're never stuck with those big cell data charges. And talk about value. Just pick your speed and keep the Wi-Fi flowing in your home at a great low price. Upgrade your Internet today. Call or visit etcnow.com to learn more. Wow, what a blessing to have spent 16 years in television. What a blessing to have done the crazy things we've done. We traveled to Alaska, we won Telly Awards, we traveled to Butts Mill Farm, and we had an absolute blast. I could not breathe down there because the building had some mildew and some moisture in it. And by the time we did the third show, you could barely hear what I was saying because it was just, oh, I could not breathe. But we have had so much fun, so much fun. And through this fun, there have become um, great friendships, great relationships, some um, moments that I would never, never, ever forget and, and some memorable times. And the most memorable is when I, I would walk out of the studio every day, my phone would ring and it was a certain person who would call and say, great job today. I loved what you talked about. Thank you for sharing the music I love. Thank you for sharing the music I grew up with. Don Coker became my number one fan. Behind Don Coker as number one was number two, Carl Ed Abernathy and Jim Taylor. They co-shared number two. Such amazing, amazing men. Jim Taylor used to cook for me and actually bring it down to my office. Just a precious, precious man. He and his beautiful wife lived up at Bent Tree and he would show up with food and it just tickled me to death. Carl Ed Abernathy was the same and, and his sweet precious Laura would tell me, she'd say, you are something because you brought my husband out of a deep depression. You made him want to live again. You made him want to be involved in things again. I had Carl Ed on the show several times and loved every single minute of it. When he passed away, a part of me went with him. When Don Coker passed away, a part of me went with him. Never once did Don Coker not call and say, great job, girl, you did a great job. Thank you for doing what you do. That's what life is about. Give those compliments, give those kind words. I couldn't have ever found a relationship like I found with Carl Ed and Laura um, if it had not been for television. So to everybody who has been a part of why I do what I do and why I love what I do, thank you to each and every one of you. Today we're gonna to end with something that's very precious to me. And um, Don Coker lost his battle with, uh, sadly, something that started in Vietnam. He died from a very aggressive cancer because of Agent Orange. I have so many friends that the same thing happened. And so today, as we leave you, I want you to think about those friends that are gone. I want you to think about those people who mattered in your life. And I want you to think about how do you treat others? And what can you do to make them feel better about themselves? What can you do to help them get through the hard moments of their life? I've been sharing this book and I wanna remind y'all, go get a book from Mike Smith. This is awesome. You will be seeing Mike Smith again in the future. He's gonna to have to come on as a regular because he's such a positive young man. Young man, uh, love him. Love he and Diane and love what they stand for. So now we're gonna leave you with just a little blip it of something that really touched my heart and every time I watch it, I think what a wonderful dear friend and uh, what a dear friend I lost when he went with Jesus way too soon. Don Coker, I love you and I'll see you again soon one day, buddy. There's the camera, we're sitting here. Which camera? Don Coker, Hello. welcome. Hey, thank you very much for We're gonna let you show. hang tight just a minute because I have one thing I need to take care of. I need to take care of business. Uh, we have one obit, and this is compliments of Townsend Rose Funeral Home. They have been our sponsor since day one. They are locally owned and operated, been in business since 1933. They are a family that you know. And, and I still get. Christmas cards from people who watched it.
million people. Very popular. And, and, and I love to WA. Yeah. Well, the area 85 in Norcross. Okay, we're going to have to check that disc because we may have a little scratch on it. It's an old, old disc. Hopefully we can get it cleaned up and, and do just a little bit of it. That is what I have left of my dear friend Don Coker. Value your friendships. Value those who matter to you and, and take care of them. You know, I think about every single day when I'd come off the air, I'd walk out this door, my phone would ring and he'd call. I think about David White, my dear friend, same thing. He would call. He would say, hey, are you coming to town? We'll go to the Yellow Jacket to eat. Hey, do you want to go out to eat for your birthday? Those dear friends. Um, that's what life is about. So remember the magic, magical moments and keep them in your heart and get rid of the negativity. Hopefully, can we get one more little tiny blip of Dawn? Is there any way? We're going to try one more time because this, this video is working great at home. I don't know if I got some dust on it when I was bringing it up here. But here we go. Yeah, here we go. It's only 54 I, miles. I told Judy, I said, how the heck does Sherry do this every, every day? Every day, 54 it's miles. It's a beautiful city. Well, I go back home a different way sometimes. I go the Blairsville way because I like to see that. And it's a beautiful yep, area. A beautiful area. Now, have you actually been to downtown Murphy? No. No. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Today. Okay. Well, you will learn a lot about Murphy because um, people will talk to you. They will know tons. Oh, yeah. makes me sad. I'm going to have to, we're going to have to play with that disc and make sure we can clean it up, but maybe it just has a little piece of dust on it. I don't know what happened, but anyway, what a special memory. What a special day. What a special opportunity to share a little bit of how I got to television with y'all. Well, I will tell you, you are the reason I'm in television. You are the reason when you stop me, when you tell me you love it, when you tell me it matters, when you tell me that you enjoyed so and so and so and so, that's what matters. Keep the negativity out of your life and keep the positive in your life and I guarantee you, you'll have a better day. Remember this, God keeps showing up. Every time I'm ready to throw in the towel, God keeps showing up. So thank you, Mike Smith. I love, love, love this book and I hope y'all will pick up a copy of it. I'll see you again tomorrow only on ETC. you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella J, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? American Made Music Festival returns to Hiawassee, Georgia, September 15th through 17th. This three-day festival features the best of country, bluegrass, and gospel music, including special guests Craig Morgan, Lone Star, Ricky Skaggs, and Kentucky Thunder, Daly and Vincent. Stars and Stripes Forever, America. Three-day and single-day tickets available, along with on-site camping by the lake. The American Made Music Festivals with Daly and Vincent, presented by Gus Arendale and Springer Mountain Farms. United Country Talking Rock Realty says it best. I'm happy as long as I can see Sharp Top. From the ground up, new home to complete renovation or remodel, we have combined the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779.